the beginning of time, we have been visited by beings. We have referred to as angels, fairies, spirits, demons. We have seen strange lights and crafts in our skies. Creature sightings such as Bigfoot, the Mothman, the Jersey Devil, and others continue to be reported year after year. What is it we're seeing out there? Is this phenomenon all connected? More importantly, is it a threat? We all need a safe space in which to share our experiences, discuss the implications of the phenomena, and come together as a community of Fortians. That place is the bunker. Come and join us. And welcome back to another episode in the bunker. Today, I uh, want to thank you for joining me for episode seven. I think uh, you're really going to enjoy this episode. First of all, with me is Beth. So, hello. That's a special occasion. And we have a special guest tonight, a gentleman by the name of Jamie Victor. He is a, uh, he's a troubadour, he's a musician, he's a true original. A, a, a true pleasure to to have gotten to know this gentleman he has had unbelievable experiences with synchronicities with premonitions with coincidences um just amazing amazing stuff uh, things and it, i was really excited to have him on because he experiences things that we all experience from time to time but nobody experiences it to this degree so I want to thank you, Jamie, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I think, we'll, I think what, what we can do is just kind of, you know, give everyone kind of an origin story, bring everyone up to speed as to like, you know, who you are and how you got to where you're at, just a brief synopsis, and, and then we'll just jump right into it. Okay, yeah, so uh, my name is Jamie. I'm a graphic designer and a musician. Uh, one makes money, the other one just makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I met our mutual buddy, Justin Banforth, really good friend, uh, by working together as a, as a freelance designer. And he was the weirdo of our little lunch table group. And I, <laughs> you know, and yeah. sometimes I remember one day he didn't, you know, he, he obviously wasn't a weirdo, but. One yeah, day, yeah. <laughs> if something paranormal came up in the conversation, I I said something about some about something. I forget what it was, and one of our buddies was like, "Oh, if you want to talk about that, you should talk to Justin over here." And I was like, "Oh yeah, what? And I, oh yeah, Justin knows all about that. He's he's a real ghost nut and all this stuff, whatever." <laughs> well, I, remember that, sorry, I, I remember that day a, after lunch. Well, you know, we all ate and then Justin and I started talking about stuff and then everybody got up and Justin and I still sat at the table and I was like, wow, I, you know, he gave me some, he gave me some pointers and some things to check out in the paranormal field. And it was something that I was always interested in, you know, just like a lot of people are, I would, I would imagine, I would hope. And he pointed me to some videos and some things to read and stuff. And I got more interested in it. And then we started our little paranormal meeting group. And uh, during that time, I mean, think weird things have always happened to me in my life. And, you know, everybody has weird things happen to them, but I had some weird stuff happen, man. And Justin, I told him about a few of them. And Justin was like, you should start writing this stuff down. Just document it. Write as many details as you can think of. The time, mm -hmm. the day, how you're feeling. Uh, you know, the person's name that you're talking mm -hmm. to, all, all those things. And I started doing that. And eight years later, I look back and, you know, Justin had said at that time, start writing these things down to keep track because over time you might start to see some patterns. And I looking, it wasn't until I made that presentation for our group last month that I compiled eight years worth of stuff and looked at it and was like, oh, now 
I see the patterns. I see, yeah. I see you know, and I had to essentially write a book, you know, make a presentation in order to, to see, to figure it all out. And now I'm finally on a level where maybe if I'd done this sooner, I might be a little bit more informed about it, but it took eight years. Good things come to those who wait. Yeah. And now that you understand it, you know, by meeting Justin, it's like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, it's like a light bulb went on. And you're like, oh, yeah, let me start writing it and then, you know, see what's going on with any of this or, or, or if it's a pattern. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Exactly. Yeah, that's great advice to just to log everything. Yeah. And then write it all down. And because our memories are flawed, you know what I mean? And after a while, you'll tend to forget things that happen. Mm-hmm. If you write it down, it's, it's there. Yeah. Yeah, it's there, and you need, and 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 that's what we all should do, you know. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I have been given and have given others this advice too that you know when you when you're trying to, when you're having problems with uh, intent and figuring out what you want to do, I always say just get a journal, start writing it down. What do you want to do? What what you know? What are you passionate about? Because it seems like writing it down kind of like cements it in your consciousness mm-hmm. almost too. Yes. Yeah. See. I'm getting on the right page. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I'm doing what you guys are doing, then I guess I'm learning something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do, do you did you feel it once you started writing stuff down that you started noticing it more, or do you think it started happening more, or both? Hmm. I guess it. Well, I don't know. That's really that's that's a good question because even to this day. I don't write every one of them down. And then there's periods of my life when, and every one of them, and I mean is a synchronicity or a coincidence Mm. or one of the, any one of these weird things, Mm -hmm. premonitions, uh, you know, now I'm learning, uh, apparently I can remote view, but even to this day, you know, I only, I only write down the really significant ones, but looking back at my notes and when I started, there are gaps in it, but from the very first, they were pretty, pretty much consecutive. I think once I, started writing it down and I don't know mm-hmm. if it was once I started writing it down or uh, so think more things started to happen but I, I just I think it was more of a uh, I don't know it's a weird it's a weird thing it's like you know you have the blue car thing you, you want to buy a car you decide you want a blue car and then all of a sudden every car you see is blue even though mm-hmm. they're all the time so, so I don't yeah I, I don't know if it, it was a case of because I started documenting this stuff it became more pr- uh, obvious to me but well and as, and as you get older um you know i feel like well because you know I, you know what i do i'm a, a psychic medium so mm-hmm. i i feel like um jamie you um are an empath i feel like you have gifts so maybe it's something that you always had and um it's just like come to fruitation now you know and a lot of times it happens you're much younger than me you're probably are you in your 30s <laughs> ah, okay sure <laughs> So I'm just, I'm just saying, so that's when it started. So it's like, you know, and, and, and I feel like you, even though it's like, you've been doing it all your life, but now it's like, okay, you meet somebody that's like, oh, well, let me talk to somebody that, well, maybe I, you know, that there's something real to this. And I feel like that's, you know, what happened with you, you know, you have gifts from the divine that, you know, whether you accept them or acknowledge them, but that's what I feel like you have. Uh-huh. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. I think that's what it's starting to, to point yes. to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're definitely an empath. You feel things. You're very sensitive. Um, and, and I think you, you've you been like this your whole life. So, you know, so that, that that's a good thing, you know. And, and, and I know, like, being an empath, I'm an empath. And it's like, you know, sometimes it's very overwhelming unless you know how to deal with it you know, but it's actually a gift. And then once you know that you have it, you can work with it and, and everything will make sense and everything falls in line. So yes. I think that's what's happening to you now. Yeah. Yes. This is all. Yeah. Speaking absolutely. the truth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, like, what was the first major thing like synchronicity or, or, or what was the first major event that you really noticed where, where, that really struck you where you were like, holy crap, what's going on here? Um, well, in the book, uh, the book, I keep, yeah, okay, the book. So I started writing these things down in a journal and a little book that a friend had given me that I was like, oh, what am I going to do with this book? It was you know, a nice little notebook, but I didn't really have a use for it. And then I had in one week, I thought about 
it was a combination of thinking about and dreaming about three different people and all of them the next day contacted me. Now it may have been that day or the day after. I don't remember exactly. I have to look back. And yeah. Documented it. But that was when I was like, okay, I need to start. I need to start writing this stuff down. Cause yeah, as you get older, you don't remember everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. Even now, the older I get, man, even things that, I look back, I'm like, wait a minute, I thought I said it was 50, it's 40? Where did I get 50 from? (laughs) (laughs) It's getting scary, but that was the first, that was the first part that, the the first time that I was like, oh, okay, I, all right, I'm going to start writing this down. And then it was all little things, but Mm -hmm. not like nothing really major. That that was in 2012. And little, little weird things that were happening, nothing too... I don't know. Well, some of these stuff, when I look at the book, I'm like, wow, I wrote a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, <I> a lot <laughs> yeah, of yeah. I, yeah. I am a storyteller, though, so I like to include a lot of details a lot of times that most people probably don't find important, but I see the connections with everything. So then I yeah. said, well, no, the reason I took 20 minutes to tell you that is because of the three extra things that I told you to see how it all makes sense. By that time, nobody's paying attention like anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, Mike's like that, too. Yeah. Really? Like, yes, every little you start talking. And then you go into every little detail. So it's kind of like the same thing. But, and, and people don't realize they do that, you know, but it, it's actually very helpful, Jamie. So it's good that you did that. Yeah, I, think, I think it's pretty common with artistic people, right? That they're more sensitive typically, right? And they'll have, they'll list more details in the story because that's what a writer does. That's what artistic people do. They tell more of the story and well, you're feeling like this, so this is why I think this happened. And then this, the sun was out on this day, so this is why, like, so that you tell more of a story. That's why you're mm-hmm. so art, art, artistic, yeah. I think, it yeah, too, a lot of times people will tell me stuff and mm-hmm. then I'll think back to remember of when they told me. And they're like, oh, yeah, remember when I told you about, you know, my, I don't know, my son got into the Olympics? I'm just making this up. But I will remember it as, Yes, actually, we were on the turnpike, and I was just yes. exit 16, and I remember <laughs> as I was, I, I, I associate a lot of memories visually with where I was and what I was doing at that time. Yeah, that's good. I don't think about it when it happens, you know, but that's how I'll put, I'm like, no, actually, yeah, I remember when you told me that. I remember I was paying <laughs> for the toaster. We were in line at Lowe's. <laughs> I remember exactly what was happening at that time. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of funny. Actually, it's funny. One of my... My cousin's uh, brother and sister, they lived together. And when uh, my cousin Christina moved out, mm-hmm. and my cousin David couldn't find his, he couldn't find his, his crock pot or his toaster oven. And he was looking all over for it. And then my cousin Christina was like, oh, no, I, I, I never, I didn't took, I don't know, maybe she said she did take it. But she couldn't tell where. Oh no! She's. I don't. I don't know where it is. And she. He's like. How do you even know it was yours? She said. Do you. Do you remember buying it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would. That would totally be. Yes. I know. I, it's my crock pot because I remember I was at Home Depot and I bought it on. You know. Yeah, and that's something you would remember. Yeah, the exact day where you're at, what you're doing. That's mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So. So. So then. So you start thinking about, I remember you mentioning in the presentation too, like you, you were, you'd have a dream about somebody yeah. and then the next day or, or the same day you would suddenly bump into them or they would text you or call you or something like that where, you know, you hadn't heard from this person in months. So that's, I think like in a, in a minor way, a lot of people experience that kind of thing a, to a very minor degree here and there. So then, you know, so then you start writing down this, this journal and some of the, I mean, let's just, let's just start going through it chronologically, like hit on, hit on some of the mo- the more, more prime, the, the more intense, you know, of these revelations that you came upon. Yeah, there were uh, quite a few, <laughs> quite a few. It, yeah, and again, it wasn't until I started writing them down that. That, that I'd look back, even now, I look back at the stuff from the beginning and I'm like, whoa, whoa. Well, okay, so that kind of stuff happens to me very frequently. And it's, 
another reason why I started writing all this stuff down because these things happen so frequently that they can't be coincidence. And I was like, I have to document this. I'll think about somebody I haven't heard from in months, maybe even a year. And then right then, my phone will light up and they'll text me. What the heck? I, well, that's really weird. You know, but when it, when it, okay, that stuff happens. But when it happens a lot, then you start to think, all right, what is, what is this? You know, like what? Yeah, why is this happening? If it's so frequently, it, it kind of grabs your attention. Okay, like some something's going on here, or why is this happening? Yeah, and things things would happen that didn't seem important until later when I look think back at them. Like, oh, that, no, wait, I think that happened, you know, for a reason. But at first, it was just things that were happening that didn't seem connected, and I didn't understand what what was so like to get to, before I get into things that that are impactful. Just to give a little bit of a background, uh, you know. Hold on one second. I have to close this door. <laughs> okay. I have the doors open in my house, and the wind is making it bang in the background. So I had to. Oh, use. okay. I would say, I would. Things would happen like in say in one day. I would. I'm making this up, but this is something that probably will happen to me. But like, I, I would say I went to the market and tomatoes were on sale. And I think, oh, you know what? I haven't had tomatoes in a long time. And look, they're practically giving them away. I might yeah. get some tomatoes. So I'll buy tomatoes. Then I'll go outside and I'll be putting stuff in my car. And a piece of paper will blow into my leg. And I'll look down and it'll be an ad from the store about or tomatoes. tomatoes. <laughs> and I'll drive home. And then, and it's not just like things that like, Oh, well, okay. Well, you've seen these things all the time. No, a piece of paper will fly into me that will have a tomato on it. It's not like it was there the whole time. Then I'll get home and it's something else tomato related. Like I'll get out of my car and there will be a, I don't know, like a rabbit will run by and drop a piece of tomato in front of me. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. But what does this mean? Am I supposed to eat more tomatoes? Like, what, what is this supposed to mean? And I yeah. looking back now, I think all of those instances were just the phenomena trying to get my attention but almost in a way of like i don't know it took all this time though it's like did they put me through a school of it, it was, like there's just so many things uh so i guess the craziest thing that happened was oh man i'm trying to pick i, I guess the golden girls thing that was really really weird that was the one that really got my attention and made me think whoa whoa yeah. Like, was, I thought weird things were happening, but this is incredibly strange. That was very interesting. Yeah, that that, that was that was uh, yeah. So, a friend of mine, we, we went out to see a comedian, and it, we went to Helium Comedy Club in in Philly. That's not important, but that's just where we were. But after the after the show. We were walking around the city. It was ended earlier than we thought. And we we're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to go home yet. So what do we do? And we, we had a bunch of drinks. So, you know, we weren't about to jump in the car and drive home. So we were just wandering around the area. And I come, we come upon, upon this restaurant called El Rey. It's a Mexican restaurant in Center City. And the sign for the restaurant just looked cool. I liked the colors. I liked the typography. It looked like, and I hate to, I hope I'm not insulting the person, but it looked like what in people in my field in graphic design call like accidental good design. It's like somebody threw together a sign because they just had these pieces. They didn't have any E's left, so they used threes, you know, but, oh, and they don't have any all black letters, but they have enough, a few red ones that'll fit in and they just throw it together to make it work. But then you look at it and you're like, wow, this looks like somebody really took their time to design this, even though I know the case was, oh, we're having more threes, uh, use an E, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And I thought it was cool, and I, I took a picture of the sign. I went, actually stepped in the middle of the street and took a picture of the sign. And then in the, the window below the sign, they had all these little sugar skull dolls. They just had all these little dolls set up in a window that, I don't know what they were really doing. They were just like, oh, they, they were in dresses. And little skeletons. So I, I look at it and just at a quick glance, I'm like, oh, you know what? This is funny. It looks like the Golden Girls. So I start, I take my phone out and I start filming it and I just compare the, the dolls to the Golden Girls one at a time. I just thought it was funny. Yeah. And there, was, there were two extra ones at the end. So, well, there was one extra one making two that I wasn't sure which one was supposed to be Rose or Betty White. 
Yeah. So, oh, is that is that one Betty? Is that one Betty? Uh, I don't know. So then, uh-huh. I go home, and it's late, about to go to bed. And I, I, at that time, I had been watching this cartoon on Netflix called Paradise PD. And I don't remember what episode I was in, but I was in the, the show, like probably halfway through. It wasn't like the first or second episode, which is crazy because if, I, if it was the first or second episode, this wouldn't have happened. So I, I should go to bed. Nah, let me watch one. Let me put an episode of that show on. So I put it on. And in the show, there's a cartoon dog that talks. And he's friends with a uh, chef. Now, these dog, the dog and the chef were in the police force, but they left, I forget if they left the police force or they just decided to start another business. So he mm-hmm. decides to get a food truck, which is a restaurant. And there's a line of people outside the truck and the ghost, the ghost, the, uh, the dog stops by to check in on the business. And the chef was spending all the money on frivolous things and he bought Rue McClanahan's skull. So he takes it up and he's like, how's buying Rue Rue McClanahan's skull? How's that reinvesting everything into the business? And wait, did he just say Rue McClanahan's skull? Rue McClanahan was Blanche on the Golden Girls. Okay, but then it gets even weirder. So that was weird. Okay, maybe random, maybe not. I don't know. What are the chances of that happening? Seems pretty weird. Then later on in the episode, the chef is in his nice office that he built, you know, with the money from this restaurant. And he has a glass case of the Golden Girls skulls, and this, which is weird because it's what I saw, you know, an hour, maybe two hours earlier. The Golden Girls represented as skulls inside a glass case. And then the last one was Betty. Now, obviously, well, and at this time, Betty Rose is still uh, Rose, Betty White is still alive. Rose is still alive. Yeah. He didn't have her skull, but it was weird because it was like an extra added little weirdness because in real life, I wasn't sure which one was Betty White. And then in the cartoon, there wasn't a skull for Betty White. So that's weird. Yeah. Then wow. I tell, so that's weird, right? So then I, I show this at Justin's house to our friends, Tina and Christina and Alan, who was on Skype. And First, Tina's like, wait a minute, that's weird. See that place right there, the nails place that you, I had, when I took a picture of the sign, you could see the nails place next to it. Now here's what's weird, in that picture, you can't see the golden skull girls. Uh-huh. It's just a totally separate layer of synchronicity here. So Tina notices that it's chestnut nails next door. She's like, that's where I get my nails done. I work right around the corner from there. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny and that's weird. But yeah. then it gets weirder. And Christina points out that on the sign for the restaurant there, it's, it's in Spanish. So it says El Rey four times. Mm-hmm. And then it says tamales, enchiladas, tacos, tequila. It has the phone number. And then it has a little saying in Spanish I'm not gonna, I'm gonna mess this up, but esto cambiara su, and I don't know if there's, there's another thing over here, but I don't know if that was part of that. And she goes, oh, that's weird. Do you know what that says? And I said, no. And she said, it says, this will change your life. <laughs> and that's odd because it doesn't say, it's a restaurant. She said it doesn't, like, that's a weird thing for a restaurant to say. It's not like it says, this food will change your life. It says, yeah. this will change your life. Now, here's the, 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 the kicker. I took a picture of that sign because mm-hmm. I thought it looked cool. It had nothing to do with the Golden Girls below it. I was, you know what I'm mean? saying? It's a separate, it'd be like if you're walking to a Flyers game to go see the Flyers, you're excited to see yeah. the Flyers, but on the way, you see a Ferrari but it turns out that that Ferrari is tied into the flock. Like maybe it was owned by one of the flyers, but you saw it as a cool car on the way to the game. It wasn't tied in. So I can't read Spanish. I took a picture of the sign because I thought it looked cool. I didn't really pay attention at all to what was written on there. It's all in English. And then just one little saying that says, this will change your life. So, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Whoa. whoa like, what? Oh my gosh. So what is that? Okay. What is that supposed to mean? Am I supposed to go eat Mexican food now? Should I watch the Golden (laughs) Girls? Maybe there's going to be something in an episode of the Golden Girls that will pertain to my life. 
give you a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Wow. Wow. (laughs) But I, 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 I don't know. So, but I wrote it down. I wrote it down and I, you know, put it in as, I guess after, after a while I started to figure out that that, that could be an instance of remote viewing, which is an instance where you as an individual somehow get a premonition or a, a picture, I don't know, of something that's going to happen in the future. Mm-hmm. And this, this has happened to me a bunch of times. However, it's not like I sit down and focus and think, let me think it. Am I going to see the golden girl? Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. You're no, not. not. Yeah. Not at all. But I've had several of these instances happen to me where it's, it's kind of like I'm seeing the future, but it's also, I don't know, like very innocuous. Like, okay. Like I was, like I was saying about the golden girls and the mm-hmm. Mexican food. Like what? Okay. That's what ultimately what that means. I don't know. Now what I'm finding is I think that this is supposed to be, what I'm talking to you guys about right now, I think mm-hmm. that's what I'm supposed to do. I think I'm supposed to tell these stories and share them with people. And I think, one, Justin says it'll help people to understand things that they're going through, just as it's helping me to understand what I'm going through. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's where the next answers lie, is talking to people about this stuff and, and see, you know, like me... <laughs> this, this, this is a little random, but <laughs> kind of kind of connected. One of the, one of our other buddies that used to come to our, our group, that he's been uh, on hiatus, is a, a Bigfoot hunter, and he told us a story one time of how he was hunting Bigfoot in the woods, and he made a bunch of call sounds, and he got a response from it, mm-hmm. and I yeah. thought. This is, wouldn't it be funny if you, what if you met this guy randomly? Now, this is something that would happen to me, but not really. What, what if you met this guy at a bar and he starts telling you this Bigfoot thing and you're like, oh my God, when did you say this happened? Last June. What park were you in? Oh my God, I was there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then you'd be like, yeah, I was the one making those noises. Like, so I just heard people call, making calls, so I thought it was funny. So I figured I'd call back. It turns out that, that was me. That was you. Like that would that would be a weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm surprised that hasn't happened to you yet. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> well, listening to listening to your your interview with Eric Spinner, he brought up a point about when he takes people out, the how he wants to. He's, it's not happened, but he wants to sort of make sure that the people aren't going to prank them or to try to trick the group. And I never thought of that. That never crossed my mind. I could see somebody doing that, going along with it, and then they go out to pee or something and then they start knocking on the wood and messing with the group. A little tangent there. <laughs> yeah. I think I, yeah. I can see that happening too. But yeah. He's like dead serious about it. Yeah. So, so what about, I remember you telling a story about that. Did some of these things happen around your father? Yeah. Or is this when this started? Do you think? No, it's one of those instances where it wasn't until I wrote everything down and saw the pattern and looking back eight years ago things like this significant or not things that were worthy of me writing down happened on my dad's birthday and i have a weird relationship with my dad and i'm wondering now if what's happening is he feels bad for not being there as a father or not being a good father, not really being a father at all. I mean, I don't want to give him zero credit, but he was very absent in my life. And I'm wondering if now he's trying to make up for that. And it's when I look at, when I look at the connections and things, it's possible that it's pointing to that. My dad was a musician and I had, my dad would disappear coming out of my life I was when in my presentation I, I I I said every ten years, but then I thought back and I'm like, what? I'm not seventy. <laughs> like it really wasn't every ten years, but I'd say five to seven years if I were to do the math. My dad would disappear and for you know five to seven years come come back into my life, and then he would give me a phone number of where he was staying or where he lived, and then I'd go to try to reconnect with him again. Sometimes he would answer the phone, but most times it would I would get the do do do. 
this number is no longer in service. And uh, mm. okay, I go back to where he was and people are like, yeah, your dad used to live here, but we don't know where he is now. And okay, and then, all right, well, then five years later, some weird thing would happen and he would pop back up. And I got, see, like thinking about it now, <laughs> with the weird, one of the weirdest things that happened was the job with Justin. So where I met Justin, I was working in Ben Salem and I was, you know, I got there the way that I knew how. And the girl that got me the job there, I offered to take her out for dinner as a thank you for getting me in and getting me money and helping me out with my career. So she told me a place to go and thought that I passed it on my way in knowing where I lived. And I, she's like, oh, don't you pass this? I'm like, no, I didn't know. And she's like, what way do you go? I told her, she's like, that is the dumbest way. She's like, all you got to do is go straight, make a left, basically. So I start going this alternate way to and from work every day. And I noticed this house that stood out really oddly. It had, same as the Golden Girls, which is also weird. It had a, a normal suburban looking house, but it had a bay window in the front. And it had these Every, every other day would change. There would be mannequins in it. So picture a nice house, a nice lawn and everything. And then mannequins in the bay window, puppets. And I'm like, like, what the heck? And then I drive by and the next day, they'd all be facing one way and then they'd all be facing the other way. And then for, you know, for a while, they would still be the same puppets. Then they would change. It wasn't every day, but I noticed this. And I started to think, that's something my dad would do. I've never seen, who puts puppets and mannequins in the front window of their house? That's really weird. <laughs> Right across yeah. from that house, though, were trees. There weren't houses on the other side. So it wasn't like people across the neighbors wouldn't see it. i just realizing this now. So nobody's going to complain except people that drive by. And one day, I'm driving by that house, and my dad walks out the front door. I hadn't seen my dad. Dude, my dad could have been in Florida. He could have been in Alaska. He could have been dead. I don't wow. know. I hadn't, I hadn't talked to, seen, or heard from him in five to seven years, I'm going to estimate. And what? You what? Were... So I pulled over and I talked I... to him. And the one thing he I said to me know. was, uh, I heard that you're in a band with your wife. And I was like, well, we're getting a divorce. Oh, yeah, it's funny. That's, that's what you did. And he goes, <laughs> whatever you do, don't stop playing music. Whatever you do, just keep playing. Find another band, just don't stop. Okay, so I, you know, I have. And now I'm finding that these synchronicities that involve, involve my dad are tied around music. So, I uh, could be him, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Wow. The, the snowman, that was really weird too. Oh, the snowman. That was one of the weirdest things that ever happened to me in my entire yes. life. Should I tell the, that? The yes. Snowman. Oh, yes. Hit, hit us with it, man. Hit us with the snowman, and then we'll take a little break. Okay, cool. We want to take a break now. And... No, we need we need to get hit with the snowman, bro. Hit <laughs> <laughs> with a snowman, snowboy. This is this, insane. This is beyond. <laughs> this is bad than beyond. So <laughs> we're in the beyond section now. Okay, <laughs> my I, I hadn't decorated for Christmas in a long time. It just I. I I had, I was married and then I got divorced and, you know, she and I used to decorate for Christmas, but you know, after the first, after the first year, uh, just Christmas holidays were just not a good thing. And it took me a long time to get to the point where I could look forward to them again. And this past December, whenever, yeah, it was December, I started decorating. I decided to decorate. I bought a house. First time I bought a house by myself. The last time I bought a house is when I was married. So it was the first time I did it on my own. And I decided, you know what, brand new house, brand new life. I'm going to, I'm going to decorate for Christmas. And you know what? I'm going to actually have my family here for Christmas. I really, I really kicked it, uh, kicked things up a notch. So <laughs> I decide, oh no, no. Okay. So I'm, I'm watching the Pee Wee's, Pee Wee Herman's Christmas episode of like the Pee Wee, it's like kind of like Pee Wee's Playhouse. It was in the Playhouse, but it's decorated for Christmas, but it's a Christmas episode. And I'm watching this, and I used to watch Pee Wee Herman with my dad. And my dad's the reason I know who Pee Wee Herman is. And now I look, and Pee Wee Herman's had pretty big, even though I don't, you know, I don't think about it all the time, and I don't make Pee Wee jokes all the time, but Pee Wee has definitely had a, a, an influence on my life, on my aesthetic and my collectibleness, I guess. It's not a word, but whatever. 
you know what I meant? Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm watching Pee Wee's Christmas special, and the playhouse is decorated for Christmas. And in the background, there's a light up snowman that is a typical vintage light up snowman. I've seen this snowman before, and I'm like, oh, I bet I could. I'd love to put that in the house. That'd be awesome. So when I was a kid, my dad had trash picked one of these light up snowmen, but it was not the standard light up snowman. It was a different one. I'd never seen it ever. It, nobody else had it. We just had it in front of our house. He had a broken head, a hole in the head, and a sign that said the North Pole, but the sign was broken. So we took the sign out and my mom stuck some fake Christmas holly in his hand so he looked like he was holding something. And we set him up outside. He had a hole in his head, but whatever. We plugged the light in and he lit up. He was our Christmas decoration. Well, after my parents got divorced, my mom threw away everything that was my father's. And that my dad took that home and it was broken. So we threw it out. That was 20 years ago. So here I am now watching Pee Wee. I see this snowman and I remember the snowman that I had as a kid. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I wonder if I can find one on Craigslist, my favorite website. <laughs> so I go, I, I go on Craigslist and I search vintage snowman. The only one that comes up. It's not like seven snowmen came up or anything. One, it's that snowman. Right? From oh my the, gosh. I'm the, like, like the, the exact same one. It's the exact same one. It had been... The ad had been posted five hours prior to me looking at it. So not only that day, five hours ago, it, the snowman was in Turnersville, which is where my house was when I grew up, but we threw him away, right? And I start emailing the people. I'm like, I will come right now, <laughs> right? Like, and, and they're like, uh, they're like well, we're not going to be home, so we'll leave the snowman outside and with a coffee can. Just put $5 in the coffee can. So I, next morning, I drive to this house in my old neighborhood, which is also odd because I recently moved to Woodbury, South Jersey. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Turnersville. I haven't, I never in a million years ever would have predicted that I would move back to New Jersey, but here I am. So I go get this snowman, immediately recognize, yes, this is the snowman put the $5 in the coffee can, put it in the back of my car. I had to go get, so the next stop on my list is <laughs> I had to go get some uh, airplane liquor bottles for a gift. I needed this to put together for a specific Christmas gift. And I remembered that one time when I was in South Jersey visiting friends, I had to stop at a liquor store to bring something to a party. And I just Googled nearest liquor store and it told me this store. I pull in, I'm like, oh, look at this. It's a liquor store in the Cherry Hill Mall parking lot. And when I go in the liquor store, they had it up by the registers, they had, I don't know, nine big, huge end caps with a million airplane bottles on them. Now, this had happened before I needed to get them. And I had go, so I'm saying, I went to this party one time, I stopped at this liquor store and I just, to get something else, and I noticed, wow, they have seven trillion airplane bottles. If I ever need airplane bottles in the future, I know to come to this liquor store. So now fast forward to I'm driving with the snowman in the back of my car and I need to go to the <laughs> liquor store. And I remember that's the one I'm going to because I need to get these airplane bottles. And it didn't hit me until I got there that that liquor store is catty corner to Sam Ash music, which is where my dad took me to buy me my very first uh, Fender Stratocaster. Wow. And hmm. that's crazy. And then I'm, I'm looking <laughs> So this is what happens with these weird synchronicities. There's synchronicity, and then this is weird, and then I turn and look, and there's another one, right? So I'm sitting in the parking lot, blown away by this, and I happen to be parked right behind a Cape May IPA delivery truck when my parents first got divorced, well, second got divorced, <laughs> and my, my dad had us for, my brother and I on the weekends, he moved to Cape May he, with his family, he moved in with his mom and dad, and that was weird. I saw a Cape May IPA truck in front of the liquor store with the snowman in the back that's next to the Sam Ash that my dad took me to get me my first guitar. Well, well my first Stratocaster. But that's, I mean, that's definitely pointed to me. That that's definitely, yeah, yeah, but absolutely. Take the snowman home. He's broken, but whatever. The light bulb was broken. I fixed him, plugged him in, and then on Christmas, 
me and my mom and my brother posed with the snowman <laughs> in my living room. Nice. <laughs> Bizarre. It's incredible that you you didn't find one that looked exactly like it, which would have been pretty impressive. But you found the exact same one in the exact same town where it was sort of tossed away, right? So, yeah, exactly. I forgot an important detail, which is really strange. Here's what happened. We, my dad brought this snowman home from the trash from God knows where, okay? We had it for an X, an X amount, a period of time. I don't remember because I was a little kid. Oh. We threw out the snowman. Somebody trash picked the snowman from my house, okay? Yeah. At a yard sale, another person goes to this yard sale and buys it with the intention of fixing it. It sat in their shed for 20 years. They never fixed it. So they decide to throw it. Oh, I'm sorry. They just get, well, put it on Craigslist. And then five hours later, I go on Craigslist looking for a snowman. Hey, if it looked like the one I had when I was a kid, even though I've never seen that snowman ever <laughs> by anyone else, that would be amazing. But I'll take any light up snowman. Hey, if I find the one that I just saw in Pee Wee's Christmas episode, that to me would be an amazing coincidence. But no, I find the actual snowman from my childhood that passed hands three times and then came back to me. Yeah. So if, if, but if that's the afterlife, if, if that's my dad trying to, that's a whole other can of worms. What is my dad doing? Is he sitting behind this, like some control <laughs> somewhere and, and pushing buttons? And how does that, you know what I'm saying? How does that even happen? And a lot of times with these kind of weird synchronicities, they transcend time and space. So you'll look back today on something that you've been saving for 20 years, 15 years, five years, one month even, and you'll go back to it for one reason and you'll see things in there that relate to your life that day. That's, that's I, who knows how the universe works. Yeah. You, know, you, know what, you know what's interesting is as you were telling the story I was thinking about, you said that, okay, you, you find the snowman, that's incredible. The, the chances of that are insane, astronomical, right? Right. And... The person posted it five hours before you searched for it and found it. They sold it to you for five dollars. Is there another five in that story somewhere? Oh my! I bet. I bet. Yes. Because that's super significant when that happens, right? Ooh. Yeah, I'm all about the angel numbers. I didn't even five. Oh yeah, five is could be a spiritual number. The five, you know, could be May five of something, but definitely <gasps> five. That's the, that's, that's the month. My dad was born on May, May 20th. I'm May 24th. Boom. There you go, yes. dude. I know. I was waiting for that. <laughs> look. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See, now I used to look at this as like, all right, well, what is this supposed to mean? Am I supposed to make snowmen in the wintertime now? Like, what are, I, I don't know, but I, it's not that. It's not that. It is just a right. specifically poignant, targeted clue for me only to pick up, yes. to make a connection on the other side of the invisible wall. Yes. And that is your dad. Everything you're saying, I'm telling you, he, he it is your dad. So yeah, Beth, Beth is over I'm here. like over here writing stuff down and Beth that is, absolutely. <laughs> Beth the medium is over here taking notes while we're, this is going on. So we'll, yeah. we'll get to that at the end. Um, but I think what we'll do right now is we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, I think we'll talk about the stories of all your synchronicities of it when you were looking for a house. That's, that's pretty impressive. Awesome. All right, everyone. Five, two, one. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, like I said before the commercial break, we're here with Jamie Victor, who's talking to us about his, his his crazy experiences with synchronicities and 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 uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, premonitions, premonitions, yes. and coincidences, all that stuff. Mm. It's pretty crazy. Now. I remember from your presentation that you were telling us about at, at this point in your life, you were looking for a house and this, you know, took place after you had started logging these experiences, you started noticing them more, you start looking for a house and then like shit went off the rails a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, a, can, can you tell us about that? Cause the, those, I really enjoyed that part. That was really just crazy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy because the the first time I bought a house, uh, it was for different. 
I want to say it was for different reasons, but that's not right. What I, I guess what I mean to say is I was very intentional about my ha the, the house and what I wanted it to be, how I wanted the room set up. I had this picture in my head of how the house was going to be, and it made it easy to shoot down a lot of houses, but I looked at over a hundred houses. <laughs> so, but I was like, I'm not giving up. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. It's just taken a long time, but, and in my, so I had it, had it pictured I'm like, okay, the top floor is going to be my office and the downstairs is going to be my bedroom and the basement is going to be a full basement. I'm going to make that a music studio. And then I'll live in between these, these things with the living room and kitchen and stuff like that. And I want two bathrooms, you know, all those kind of things. But what, even, even what ended up happening was not that, but, uh, tying into this experience, I wanted, I wanted to have a big office in the house. And I'm like, even if it takes up the whole top floor, that would be awesome. That's, that's what I want. I want to work out of my house, but I want to increase the space that I have to work from. And so part of my career, I, in 2008, I worked on Everlast, the boxing company, and I designed the current Everlast logo and helped come up with the tagline, the icon, rebranded Everlast. Everlast was a company that had been in business for over a hundred years and they never had any kind of guidelines for their brand. Somebody made a logo and they didn't even have a consistent tagline, but people just took the logo and put it on whatever. And they weren't consistent even with their, their product line. I mean, when you're buying a wooden spoon with an Everlast logo on it, I mean, come on, what does that mean, right? So they <laughs> It came to the company that I was working for at the time, and uh, it was awesome. I was right place at the right time. I got to work on an amazing project, and it was, it was just awesome. Part of the things that I designed for them were ta um, yeah, hang tags and templates for all of their boxing packaging for the entire world. So I, part of that was hang tags. So I, I go, I find this one house after looking at all these houses, I don't know, some of the houses I just opened the front door. Nope, just left, we get right back in the car. Finally find this house that I think is gonna be the right house. I go upstairs, the office area is perfect. I open the closet door, which is where I would put my design samples and stuff. And there's nothing in the closet except for five or six hangers and one thing attached to the hanger and it's an Everlast hang tag. So what's weird about that is, hey, I designed this, okay? Yeah. It's, 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 in the, it's in the closet that I'm going to put my Everlast hang tags that I made. <laughs> wow. So it's already, already got a head start. But that, that, that's bizarre, right? It's like, okay, wow, that's a, this is definitely, this is the house. This is the house. Well, no, it wasn't the house because there was an underground oil tank that people, the company selling the house was aware of. You, if you don't, if you, some people, some old houses will have that and you don't know about it and mm -hmm. it's not disclosed and fine. It just stays in the ground, whatever. It is a terrible thing and it's toxic and it does pollute the ground. It can at least. And chances are that's what's happening. So if they disclose that there's an underground oil tank and they say, listen, we're not getting rid of it. If you want the house, you got to get rid of it. It's like $40,000 to do that. So that, okay, I'm not doing that. Even though the house was perfect, I'm not spending $40,000 on this. I was like, well, can't we just set, just say we did? <laughs> no. So, so we, we didn't get rid of it. Whatever. Didn't buy that house. Then I'm looking, I find this other house. Now, granted, this was not a house that I, I was, I was, I loved the house, but it needed more work than I was prepared to do. I go down the basement. There's an Everlast box that I designed that I'd never seen in real life, actually. I designed the box, but I never got to see it in real life. I made the template, sh shipped it off to the printer, and then I just had never seen it in a store. Here it is. But, no, not the house. However, it was on Mantua Pike, which is the street that I now live off of. So I think this was just showing me that you're on the right path, literally on the right path, just not this effed up house. But, okay, so... I find another house, same setup, same closet. Now picture where this closet would be. I go in there, 
I open the closet and it's pitch black in there. There's no light, but for some reason, something told me to look in the closet. So I, I turn my flashlight on and there's a hang tag. <laughs> That's it. It's a hang tag. It's some weird metal thing with holes in it. I, I don't know what it is. Just laying on the floor. Now it's a Pokemon hang tag, which, okay, it's not Everlast, but it's still a hang tag. The strange thing was the night before I was at Justin's house and as I was leaving, Justin had a, a package of Pokemon trading cards that he got out of a cereal box that he didn't want. And he was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw them away or just give them to somebody. He's like, you want it? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I don't collect Pokemon, but like, don't throw it away. And I was like, yeah, I'll take the Pokemon card. And then the next day I go into a, the design closet and there's Pokemon on the floor. So that's strange, right? Same closet. Same closet, I go back for a second inspection of the house. Pokemon tag's still there, so okay, cool. I look closer in the closet and I find three small, tiny objects. One is another Pokemon. It's a little tiny, 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 I'm talking not even, a, maybe a half inch circle, and it's got a Pokemon, the little ball on it. A, a metal, gold colored rose which looks like an earring without the earring stem now what's weird with that is that rose is my as a gemini rose is my flower so okay and also it's a golden rose which is a Jimi hendrix song and Jimi hendrix is my idol and a wow. button from the saint thomas virgin islands all right so that's weird right so I, I, oh lucky you yeah i've been there yeah <laughs> so i take a picture of these things and wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. The next day, my client, one of my clients, is in. He's on vacation, and I, I he was in Florida. So I text him and say, I know for some reason I thought he was in Florida. I said maybe maybe this is Florida. My geography is terrible. I say, hope you're enjoying Florida, and he <laughs> responds, I'm in the U.S. Virgin Islands near Puerto Rico, and I respond, Are you kidding? This is weird. I went on my house inspection yesterday and I found a pin on the floor that says Virgin Islands. Oh my gosh. So that's <laughs> weird, right? But guess what? That house, I actually buy the house, pack up all my stuff. My whole house is in boxes. The night before I'm supposed to move, I check in with the realtor to make sure everything's okay. And he says it's not. Turns out that house is in foreclosure and they didn't say anything and they tried to get it by, I would have been stuck with that lien and they tried to sneakily get it by and they caught it at the last minute. Now, apparently when a house falls into foreclosure, you're supposed to find it at the first minute, not the last minute. Right. And my mortgage broker said, Jamie, I've been doing this business for 40 years and this has never happened. Right. So this oh is the my luck goodness. Like I have luck like this too. Oh wait, something that's never happened before. Now, now this has happened to other people and, and actually more people I talk to, more people I found that it happened to. One of my buddies that I mentioned in the presentation, actually the guy from the band Rain Wolf, uh, my buddy David, he bought a house, put everything on the truck. He was, he was just about to leave and found out that the house sale fell through. He had to, talk his realtor, I'm sorry, his landlord into letting him stay. The landlord jacked up the rent. Then to add insult to injury, if not that, he had to unpack everything and put oh it all God. back. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> what the right. hell? Right. So now here I am, all my stuff's packed up. And the next day I'm on the phone and they're trying to work out a deal and that their realtor is saying all this crap where they're like, we're going to make it happen. All they need is $10,000. And they're trying to get the $10,000. We're going to make this sale happen today. And I was pissed off. So I said to my realtor, I'm like, wait a minute. We didn't sign anything to, like that says I have to buy the house, right? And he's like, no, that would happen. That, that hadn't happened yet. So I was like, what if I say no? And he's like, well, isn't this the house that you want? It's, you know, it's house number 87 or whatever the F it was. And I was like, N well, no. Let's just keep looking. And he's like, okay. So we told him no. I found a bigger house, not nearly in as good as condition, but way cheaper, way cheaper. I have this giant house. 
my mortgage payment is very low. I got really lucky. However, the house needed a lot of work and I needed to move in El Pronto. So mm -hmm. I hired some co contractors to do stuff to fix the house up. The house was used prior to me moving in as a marijuana grow and processing plant. So sweet. Yeah. So <laughs> I mentioned that to you, you today for 20. <laughs> it was yeah, well, yeah, right before we went on air. That's weird. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, it is weird. It was, it was an odd, just an odd thing about the house, but I got a really good deal. And I, however, the guy, the house wasn't in terrible shape, but since the guy only did one thing in here, he didn't live here, he mm -hmm. didn't take care of the property. So I had to get, uh, he did fix the roof, but I had to get new gutters. I had to get all new electric. I had to get a, a new driveway. I, so, so much, so much work had, had to be done to this house. However, mm -hmm. the office was... I had to get to right to work. So when I move in, this is my office. Boom. I ripped up all the carpet, which is real fun. And then I set up my desk immediately. There was nothing in the office except for a cork board that was already affixed to the wall. And it just, I was like, you know what? When I put the desk in here, I was like, there you go. I already got a cork board. Let's just start. I didn't really think out the rest of the furniture. I needed to get back to work right away and start paying for this house. So, yeah. boom, I slam it together. I have my desk set up, whatever. I'm using, I'm actually using the cork board that was on the wall. So after I get settled into the house, I look around in my office and I was like, I, this is stupid. I need to move the desk. I need to rearrange this. So I move the desk, which means I need to move this cork board, whether I use it or not. I can't leave a cork board just in the middle of the wall. I take the cork board off the wall and on the other side is Pokemon. <laughs> oh my God. Like, oh my then I go to Justin's house for one of our meetings and Justin had been outside of his house five minutes prior to me pulling up. Uh -huh. and I pull up, he comes back outside and some wind blows and some things start, I, I, I said trash, but in my presentation, that's because I, I didn't want to give away what it was, but it looked like trash was blowing down the street. I looked down, it's two Pokemon cards. Oh my God. <laughs> and Justin was like, I was just out here five minutes ago. There wasn't anything out on the ground and it blew right into you. So that was the last Pokemon incident. Things had not happened after that, but I think it was, here you go, you made it. You're in your house. All right, cool. Now the, the you know, now the phenomenon is gonna choose some other, some other thing to get my attention. And not not Pokemon, which it did, blah blah blah. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. That's my house house buying experience. That's outrageous. It seems like so. So at the at the point where you were looking at all these houses and you started seeing the Everlast like hang tags and stuff. Like at what point professionally in your career was Everlast for you at that point? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, was this something that, you know, that you had done that brought you some success, but it was kind of in the past at that point? And so, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's all good. Like, you know, do you, like, do you know what I'm getting at? Like, I'm trying to draw like a parallel between like you, you're looking for a house, your intent is I need to find a house, right? And it's going to be an office, it's going to be a home, it's going to be a studio, it's going to be your, your home base, right? So yeah. you start seeing like Everland stuff, like what? As far as like your career goes, like what significance did Everlast have for you in your career at that point? Awesome question. Okay, so wow, right. And there's another part to this too that I haven't told anyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell but, us. Okay, a so, bunker so, exclusive. <laughs> yeah, it's even weird. It's it's actually really really it's really weird. But I, I, oh god, the thing is with these stories, and based on what we talked about earlier. I'm, I'm a designer, therefore I'm a detail-oriented person. So when it comes to what I do professionally in my music and how I live my life, I'm very detail-oriented. I notice things that most people wouldn't notice after years. I see it the first time. So it's just, it's, it's one of my gifts, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm grateful to it, for it because it's allowed me to have a career based on details. But telling these stories, there's so many details. So I try my best to talk fast. So I don't take two hours to tell one story. Uh, <laughs> that's and what ends up happening. But that's so, okay. Everlast, at that point, 
that was a long time ago. So that was 2008. It was a high point of my career getting to do work on a, a brand like that. I mean, I've done, I've done work for several global brands, Microsoft, uh, oh my God, Guitar Center. I don't think they're global, but I did work for a Guitar Center. Uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of high level brands, Comcast, Xfinity, I did a lot of high level brands. But Everlast is the one that I think I'm most proud of because, well, not really, but not that my dad was like all about boxing, but I did watch boxing with my dad. It wasn't with my mom, you know, and I'm not a violent person. I would, I've never gotten into a fight ever. And so I, I, I'm not a violent person. So that's weird on the tie to my father, actually, is the boxing. My dad would be proud to know that I designed the Everlast logo, you know. Um, so it's definitely a high point and something that I point out. But yeah, it's in the past. Also, so that, just trying to think of all the connections here. So that hang tag, I did not design exactly that hang tag, but I designed a template for the hang tags that somebody else made. And it was an evolution of the brand, even though it's still the same brand. So that's, I don't know, that might be more inside, <laughs> inside for me. But uh, I don't know, does that answer your question? I guess it's significant in the fact that it's still significant to me today and I'm building a brand new website for my business and it's the first case study is my Everlast work. So it, it does still, it's still very important to me. Interesting. Yeah, I was just wondering, because you started seeing these things while you're looking for houses and it, it seems super pointed. I mean, for you to walk into a house, it's like literally empty. There's nothing in there. You walk into the off, yeah. into the room that would be your office and there's nothing in there except a couple of hangers and a hang tag that you designed. So that, that's, yeah. That's, I mean, the chances of that are just ridiculous. You know, like yeah. it, it's, it's some kind of, it, it's extremely pointed. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I was just curious if like, because you started seeing these Everlast things and then shortly thereafter started seeing these Pokemon cards everywhere yeah. that connected you to Justin, which is the person that got you to start logging these experiences and taking notice of these what's happening patterns of what's going on yeah. and what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then you find your house. You have to looking at dozens and dozens and dozens of other houses right yes yeah um, yeah 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 no. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah see it's a path it is it is yes a path. yeah there's there's no map and there's there's just you're blind you know just to pay attention yeah you know? it's yeah it's uh that's what i think it's an analogy it's, i was thinking of an analogy that i make to performing music for crowds of people it's yeah. interesting because it's like, you know, you go from not learning an instrument to choosing an instrument to spending hours and hours and hours dedicating yourself to learning about the instrument, about other musicians and teaching them. Whether you take lessons or not, you learn how to play the instrument. Now you can play the instrument. Now you have to figure out how to play the instrument in a band and you have to learn all the steps to become a, 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 a state, you know, an onstage performer and play with other people. And you finally get to the point where you can you've gotten to the point where you're at the level where you're competent enough that you can perform the music that you hear in your head for other people. Mm. And then you get mm -hmm. on the stage and it's like, you can't hear anything. You can't see anything. The sound itself, the, the sound that you hear as a musician performing on stage is, is not anywhere yeah. close to what the people in the crowd hear which doesn't sound like it would be a, a big deal, but you can't hear anything. Now, now I've played in a lot of, you know, low par venues, so that, that does ha happen, but it's taught me how to play. I can play in any situation. You know, if the power goes out, I'm still playing, even though there won't be sound coming out, I yeah. can do it. You know, so all <laughs> yeah. those experiences. So I try to tell people like, imagine if you, you wanted to be an artist and you, you taught yourself how to draw, you know, you finally learn how to draw. Now you learn how to paint. You can finally paint for people and they give you a canvas. They blindfold you and they break the paint, the, the, the uh, paintbrush and they're like, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Wait, what? That's what it prepares you for. You know, that's, that's life. Life prepares you for. That's amazing. Yeah. So the Pokemon thing. So get this, right? So Everlast tied into my career. Justin lives in Bristol, okay? 10 minutes from Justin's house is a, a toy company 
called Wicked Cool Toys. The creative director there is my buddy from college. His name is Kevin, and he taught me how to juggle. <laughs> Kevin's awesome. <laughs> Kevin just, I can juggle with two uh, tennis balls. I can do that. Oh, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Yeah, I can do it. I can juggle, yep. So I had heard about a job opening there. They design stuff for toys. Yo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What? That would be so amazing to do that. Right, um, Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, yeah. You do packaging and design and stuff for that. And uh, All right, cool. So he said that they had a new client, but he couldn't tell me who it was. And I had to sign an NDA before he could tell me. And I was like, okay. So I sign it. We're sitting there in the conference room. And he's like, all right, you're not going to believe this, but we got this last minute project, like an RFP, which is request for proposal from this company. And there was, we thought, there's no way we're going to get this business. But I threw something together that had an idea and I sent it and they picked us. I was like, oh, no way. Who is it? Now, mm -hmm. now Pokemon. Now, this is before all the house buying stuff. This is years and years ago. Okay. So I'm like, okay. He's like, yes, yeah, so we got the Pokemon brand and you get to do all this stuff you know, for Pokemon. And I thought, this is an amazing experience for somebody. This is a dream job for somebody who knows and loves Pokemon. I don't know S about Pokemon. So I don't want to take somebody's dream job. You know, that would be terrible. So I was like, yo, I, I'm not the person for this job. I, I just don't think I'm the person for this job. This is an amazing experience for somebody. I was like, look, I'll learn. If you want, I'll give me the, I'll watch Pokemon. DVDs. <laughs> you know, this is amazing. But this is for somebody who needs to love Pokemon. And yeah. so that's funny, right? Because that's, yeah. I mean, now they're around the corner from Justin. So when this happens, I take the picture of the trading cards that Justin gave me and I send it to my buddy and I tell him the story. I'm like, yo, how crazy is this? And he goes, oh, you know what's funny? We do everything for Pokemon but the trading cards. Uh, what? <laughs> oh my what? gosh what? What? I, I thought it was funny when Justin gave him to me because I was like oh, I know what's crazy about this dude this came from right around the corner from your house my buddy is the creative director of Wicked Cool Toys and they make they do stuff for Pokemon and then my buddy's like yeah, actually yes and no we, we don't do <laughs> yes, that's, that's <laughs> oh my god weird right just so weird, crazy weird stuff. yeah that's crazy so what do you think so what do you think is like the overall message to like all these signs and symbols? And, and just for, for the listeners out there, like don't, make no mistake, this is like probably 2% of, of Jamie's presentation where he really outlines in great detail these experiences and many, many others. It is outrageous how often this kind of stuff happens to this guy. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's it, it's super interesting because it's the kind of thing, like I said earlier, that a lot of us experience to a lesser degree, but not constantly, almost every single day, if, yeah. not, if not every day. Yeah. Right. Do you think, like, what do you, what are your thoughts on what this means in a general sense? Like, what's the overall message behind all these things? I think what I've learned now with this is... So the way that my brain works is my brain is like five paragraphs ahead of what I'm going to say. So I have to wait for my brain to get like to catch up. <laughs> this, is all got. this is the way this is way. So I'm like trying to think of the mm -hmm. best way. I'm already telling the story in my head and editing it before it comes out of my mouth to tell you why. I'm already <laughs> hearing, I'm already hearing the story and thinking about how I'm going to edit it yes. in the end product. <laughs> right. exactly. That's just, that's how my brain works, which I learned from, Doing the putting the presentation together, uh, Tina had sent me some stuff, which that's me. Like as far as I've learned as a Gemini, and I'm also uh, I'm a what is it called? It's Neptune and Sagittarius. It's something with the the astrology, which if I had it in front of me, it makes it makes sense. But I, it's I, I'm I'm prone to this type of behavior to to think the way that I do and to get these kind of premonitions and stuff like that based on the astrological chart, which you could say is BS. Right, but when it happens to you, then you start to think differently. And what's weird is I grew up Roman Catholic, going to church every Sunday. And, I get it. Right, and I was pissed on the holidays. We went every Sunday, 
And then on the holidays, when all the people that didn't go to church, all of a sudden those people came and now I can't, I have to stand up against the back wall because of I these know. people, right? But then I became that, that person, right? And not to say that I don't believe in a higher power, but I've strayed away from the Catholic church over time. And then I meet Justin. Justin opens me up to this world. Justin literally gave me this, the space suit to go explore space. And that's how I look at it. <laughs> I, always, I always looked at space and wondered what was out there. And mm -hmm. Justin was like, here you go, buddy. He gave me the space suit and he gave me the tools to get out there. Now it's up to me to swim, you know, but, you know, that's, that's kind of where, where, it, where it led to. And now Justin has gone back to the church in his beliefs. And I'm like, no, I don't know what I believe, you know, but that was when I first met him. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to that. Yeah. And now after I've talked with uh, our friends, uh, Michael and Rosalind about this stuff, they yes. did, a, did a reading for me. And I think that there are, I have not one, not two, but maybe four or five guardian angels or whatever they are, but people that look out for me. And I'm sure that this happens to everyone. This is not a singular experience. Everyone has their angels that, that protect them, whether you believe in it or not. It's not mm -hmm. some stuff happens to you that you're like, huh, well, also, as a designer, I'm a, a essentially graphic designers are problem solvers, right? So I, that's what my brain does. That's what I do. I can just put it in a visual way to make people understand things, just like they drew pictures in the caves on the cave picture drawer, you know. But of today's times, like you know, I'm yeah, people understand. Um, oh man, I'm losing my train of thought here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I get it. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, You're okay. But, oh no, no. Okay, so what I've learned now is. I think that I have guardians that are protecting me and keeping me alive and keeping me on the right path for reasons that I'm still discovering, I guess. And they just, they show me in symbols and signs and ways that only I would understand, which Justin brought that point up. That he's like, if you were, if he's like, not to say that this is what it is, but if you were you in the future and you had to come back, you know, like, <laughs> like Scrooge style, like Bill Murray and you're invisible, right? And you had to let yourself know, but you couldn't see or talk to yourself. What would you do to let Jamie Victor know that, you know, these are meant for him? And I'm like, this, <laughs> this is the, these are the kinds of things, but it's not me in the future. It's, I think it's, it's angels and, and, you know, people that are, were close to me and still, you know, stay close to me and keep me, keep me going where I'm supposed to be going. And when, when I'm doing stuff that I really believe in and I put my heart, my passion, and my soul in and these things happen, to me, that is a sign to keep going. You're on the right path. Just just yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. I think that's a good way to look at it, too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Because otherwise, because you could, you could seriously, like, obsess about each thing yep. and just kind of try to follow it and just go down the rabbit hole and just get obsessed and just in the details of the signs that just kind of chase things down forever and never really figure out what the heck it is. Well, meanwhile, you're, you're so focused on this little thing that happened. You're missing the next like signpost, so to speak. Yeah. You know, I think they're just kind of like little clues. Like you said, just like, just keep, keep doing what you're doing. You're on the right path. You're, you're good. You mm -hmm. know, they're almost like a little tip of the hat in the universe. Like, yeah, it's, you know, life is more than just this, you know? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Yeah fascinating yeah so i want to i want to defer to beth at this point like i see you have lots of notes over there that you've been writing uh while we've been talking this whole time so what uh what's what's going on over there what you got <laughs> well he's you know questioning whether it, his dad is like influ you know influencing him on what he's doing and why he's seeing these premonitions and all this yeah. and, and i and i agree that it is i think he's just letting him know that yeah i'm here and i could be better use for you here and yeah. in, in the afterlife in heaven than here on, on on earth and he and he did the best he could and he he's very proud of you and i don't know if you knew that but he really is you know um and you know it's just like you know he's like letting you know to look at the whole big picture than than just what we see in black and white and i think that's why you know you're having all these premonitions and all this stuff do you do you have a grandmother that's crossed over yes all right oh. Okay, so I feel like she is there with you, like influencing you also. Yes. You know, like 
there's more to life than all this. And you know that because you're amazing. You have an amazing soul. Your, your energy and your light is amazing. And just that, you know, and I think that's what your dad wants you to know that there's more to life than what we think right here, what we're living now and what we're dealing with. You know what I mean? So I think he just like, okay, look at the bigger, bigger picture. Always look at the bigger picture. And I think that's what the one thing that he wants you to, you know, to, to know, you know, like there's always an answer. There's always a way out. If you just keep believing and trusting and know that we're all here for a reason, you know, I don't, does that make any sense to you? A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, good. And I he, think that's a, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. When, when Roz and Michael gave me the reading, she started off with saying, she's like, I think it, she started asking me details about my dad. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, did he smoke? Yeah. This, this, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, she's like, yeah, I think your dad stopped in before we got on the phone today to check in. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I didn't know how to do that. My dad, I don't, I don't know. That's a whole other. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder about that. I wonder about, I wonder like when I haven't watched a horror movie in a long time. I love uh -huh. horror movies, but I've avoided them because I, I, I'm afraid now. I don't know. I love horror movies, but I haven't seen them in a while. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I always think about in the horror movies, like when, when the kid's in the room or the guy's in the room and it's all mm -hmm. dark and the ghost, you know, the ghost is in the room and then yeah. they jump out. What is the ghost doing? I, w I would love to see the ghost <laughs> sitting there chilling. Like, is he just, is he, is he looking at his watch, like counting down? I want to see what the ghost is doing. That's what makes it scary because you don't know. Yeah. I think it would make a funny skit if you yeah. could see what, what the ghost was doing. Exactly. Know, so yeah. I wonder about the afterlife. Like, okay, well, how did he know to go to, to New York to talk to, you know? <laughs> well, you know, you know what? I feel like your dad died, you know, way beyond his years. You yeah. know, he was young, sudden, maybe unexpected that you didn't maybe thought he would cross over when he did. And yeah, they, they can go anywhere they want to go. You know, they're here and there. You know, they can go wherever, wherever they want to go, they could do that. You know, so that's why they, they do all that. Like you're questioning, why was he there? Why was he here? But they can go anywhere because they're spirit now, you know, and they're, they're all about love. Like they, Everything that they've been through here on the physical earth, that there's none of that now. Everything is love, and they know what they did and what they did not do, and they just want to be here for their loved ones who are still here on earth, you know, and to help them go through what they're going through. They can't tell you what to do, but they can be there to, you know, to be with you, you know? Yeah. I just wonder, like, did he get a text that said, <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did he, he, my dad didn't know Michael and Rosalind. So how did he know to go, or I guess, cause well, she taps into that realm. So maybe, maybe a beacon went off mm -hmm. and he saw it from, I don't know, you know Neptune or wherever. And, like, <laughs> oh, and he flew right over to there. I, I'm mm -hmm. like, how do they make the connect? How do they know? Do they, do, are they given a book? Here's a book from, uh, yeah, you know, who, who would you like to follow? It's still alive. Oh, your son. Okay, well, here's all the records we've kept on your son. Well, <laughs> here's them as friends. Here's their phone numbers. I, I don't know. Who knows how they yeah. work? I, I, well, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but just speaking like objectively, not to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but I've seen it happen just being around Beth. I've seen her do that. And I've seen, I we've been driving to a location, you know, to, to help a private, you know, to a, like a private case to help people that are having you know, activity in their home. We'll be driving to the location and before we even, like, as soon as we get in the car, she'll just give me that look and she'll just go, uh oh. And I'm just like, oh boy. And I'll just hand her a notebook because I just, because the person that is maybe causing the activity will just get in the car with us. So like, we don't even get to the location yet. And somehow mm -hmm. she's already making that connection. And that person just knows what, what we're, who just knows that what we're doing there and what's going to happen and where we're headed and just kind of ahead of the event just arrives and begins interacting with Beth like before anything, before we even leave. Sometimes we'll be we're driving, you know, doing going like to a four hour car ride to a, to a certain location. And on the way there, she's communicating with someone that's at this location and we're four hours away in the car. Well, I think the reason is that because, okay, so your dad knows that you're friends with Roz. You know what I mean? Like, he knows that. So that's why I, Spirit is comfortable to coming to a medium or a psychic that is friends with their family members. So that's why he came to them. 
because they know that you're friends with them. So that's why he was like, okay, so this is somebody he could identify with. And that's why he came to, to them, to Roz and Mike, you know? So that's, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so was your dad was, was, so when your dad crossed over, was it like a, like unexpected, like you didn't know, it, it felt like it was, it happened quickly. Yeah, it did. I, I hadn't heard from my dad since. So, okay. There was that instance where I passed by his weird mannequin house, right? It's all yeah. men. Mm -hmm. went back, I went back there. He said, you and your brother are welcome here anytime. Okay. I went back with my brother. And at that time I had a, uh, <laughs> I had a, a hearse as a band vehicle and mm -hmm. I thought it'd be cool. My dad was like, oh my, if anyone's going to appreciate Everyone's yeah. scared of this car. My dad's going to love this. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad was also a meth addict and he was living with other drug addicts. And yeah. I didn't think of that. And could you imagine being all hopped up on that stuff? Whatever that's like. Yeah, I'm feeling heart. His heart stopped. And, the, the, yeah, and then the, a hearse pulls up. Like I, they, would, they probably thought I was the Grim Reaper. And <laughs> maybe, when Justin oh, yeah. and I got out of the car, I'm sure they saw us, but they were like, who is this? I saw people peeking through the windows and everything. And my brother just goes, James, don't feel right. <laughs> we we got to get out of here. So I wrote my phone number on a piece of paper and I stuck it in the mailbox with 7,000 things. There were, the mailbox, it was like somebody went on vacation and just never came back. There was so much mail. I'm like, this is never even going to, it's never even going to find it. You see it? Fast forward five. That's the word now. Yeah. Yeah, just about, sorry to interrupt. Beth is just showing me one of the notes so that she wrote a, down. Just tell them. Yeah, so there, I, I wrote down, like, I was seeing the mail. Mailman, just mail. Just, there was a significance with uh, something to do with the mail. So oh. that's... So she wrote that down. I, I just Mike. wrote down, I just showed it to Mike. So, so that's... So, so, so your dad was showing me this. Does that mean... So you're just telling that. So can you finish that for me, please? Yeah, so I wrote it down on a Little Caesars pizza napkin that was in the glove compartment of the hearse. I wrote my phone number down, and I'm like, "How? Where am I going to put it? There's just mail everywhere." So I, I don't, I remember being specific about it. I think I put it in the box. I know I, I was very specific. I don't remember exactly where it was. Yeah, and I didn't hear from him. So I'm like, "All right, well, obviously he didn't get that." So then I'm driving past the house, and I see the phone number on the side of the truck of the guy that lived there so i call him and i'm like yeah is this the dude from the roofing company yeah and i said oh this is this is jimmy's son i said my dad was living with you oh yeah he was living with me i don't know where he is now oh okay gone right no phone number nothing maybe he, if he gave me a phone number it definitely went to a, a dial tone or not a number yeah, yeah. fast forward five years let's say and i'm at a party with my band at the time, drunk, because it was a big party and I was safe. I was with, you know, a, a crowd of people and I wasn't going mm -hmm. anywhere. So I had a lot of drink and my phone rang and I never answer my phone if it's a number that I didn't recognize, but I was drunk. So I thought it would be funny to answer it. Guys, I don't answer the phone when I don't recognize the number. And it was my dad. And I was on the phone with him cracking up people in the party are like oh my god what's, they're coming up to you are you okay are you okay i'm like it's my dad i'm just laughing it's my dad's hilarious yeah and, uh, <laughs> i asked him i was like well, wait a minute how did you get this number oh you wrote on a piece of paper i'm like it, it, on the napkin yeah i'm like you waited until now to call <laughs> you got that napkin from five years ago <laughs> whatever at least he called me yeah right? yeah so then he gave me a phone number and I called him once or twice after that. And then the third time, second or third time I called, do, 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 we're sorry. Then I, and gone, right? Yeah. Fast forward another bunch of years. I, I don't know exactly how many, but I get a message on Facebook from mm -hmm. one of his friends that mm -hmm. Fran and he lets me know that your dad's in hospice care and at Nazareth Hospital. So I tell my brother, my cousin, Joey, also reached out and let me know. Yeah. And my brother and his girlfriend, Lex, and I went to go visit my dad. We go into the hospital and we see him. He's laying there. He looked like a concentration camp victim. Mm. I thought he was dead. He was just bones. Like, oh, yeah. my God. Right? I we get go, it. We go in. We're like, Dad? He wakes up. 
he's basically the same dad, just in the body of a concentration camp victim. Right? Mm-hmm. He's still all oh up God. and bouncing up and all around and everything, but he was in terrible, terrible shape. Yeah. And uh, interesting because he quote oh yeah he quoted he quoted movies. My dad would always just quote movies and stuff, and he mm-hmm. quoted a movie, and I was the only one in the room that knew what the quote was. I finished it with him, and it was from the movie Life, which is kind of interesting. And then right before my brother and I left. My dad told me to get the nurse because he had to pee. And I was like, I'm thinking, don't you have like the colostomy bag thing? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I don't have a catheter. No, no, no. And I went over, I was saying goodbye to him. And my dad picked up the sheet and peed on me, which was not necessary. He did not have to do that. But it was really funny, I thought, especially since he was in hospice care and he pissed on me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> only I would get that connection. You know, I would only, I'm, I made bad jokes and puns all the time. And I got it later when I was doing this presentation for you guys. I was like, oh my God, that's a pun in the, wow. And that was wow. hospice. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that, so then it, I, so I learned a lot about that process when somebody passes away, even though my dad was not in my life for any real long extended period mm-hmm. of time. Mm-hmm. When he, since technically my brother and I were next of kin, even though my dad could have been in Zimbabwe yeah. before, no idea, right? Because I had visited him within a week of his passing, which by the way, he died right around his birthday which is right near my birthday, because of that, that constituted a meaningful visit. And therefore, I'm now next of kin. And I have to, I'm in charge of the funeral arrangements. And I'm like, uh, no, 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 no. So then I I talked to, I, I talked to the, and then my dad's family were trying, they were trying to force me into doing that. I was like, you guys, my dad had a history. I'm sure you know more than I do. I wouldn't sign a Burger King receipt with my dad's name on it. I, I, I do not want to be tied to whatever. I don't even know where my dad yeah. has lived. I don't want to be tied to that. And it yeah. caused a rift in that, in that. But I mean, we already had a strained relationship because I didn't really see them because of my parents' divorce and all that. But yeah. I never hate them or anything. I still love them. They're still family. Bit of a, I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I, I talked to the funeral parlor guy and he was straight up with me and he told me he's like listen if you don't sign this paperwork your dad can't have a funeral and I was like and I told him the same Burger King analogy I was like yo no I'm not doing it and he's like well look you're not obligated to you don't have to but I'll tell you right now I can relate to you because I'm dating a woman right now and she has a a a daughter and her daughter's father is He's like, he goes, mm-hmm. I mean, for lack of a better term, he's a lump. <laughs> Which was like, <laughs> a nice way of on something. I thought that was funny. And he's like, yeah, if I was in your situation, I get it, man. I get it. And I was like, Yo, you don't understand. When I was trying to buy a house the first time when I was married, my, somehow, even though I have a different name than my dad and a different social security number, my dad's name was multiple times on my credit report. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it, it took so much work to get that off. I'm like, Yo, on your report, the names are different and the socials are different. I'm not, that's not the same person. Oh, it it took a lot of work to get it. So when this came up, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if they buried my dad. I don't know if they, they said, if you don't sign this paperwork, your dad's body then becomes the property of the city. He's like, but telling you right now, it's still, they're not going to just dump your dad in some, you know, dumpster. They will still work with the family and stuff. It's just they won't be able to do it, which is weird. You'd think that this yeah. time would be worried about something like this. What? Just, what? You, okay, no, never mind. You can, don't let, you know, you can, you want to deal with the dead body, okay. Wouldn't you think they'd be the first person to be like, oh, yeah, you want to get rid of this body or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> but, but right. yeah, so that was, yeah, so it kind of ended on like a bad note in a way, but I did not want, who knows? My dad may have run a drug ring. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, my, yeah, I know certain things from my dad's past that I won't repeat here, but I, what about the stuff I don't know? I don't want to be tied to that. What about the stuff that I don't know? No, I'm not signing this. So it was just crazy because they're like, yeah, yeah, that, that constitutes a meaningful visit. If you sent your dad a card, that constitutes a meaningful visit. I'm like, what if the card said F you? You were never there in my life. Screw yourself. That still constitutes a meaningful yeah. visit. 
It does. Yes, it does. Even if you wrote that, it does. Oh so I, what? So that's how that, wow. that's how it ended. So maybe that's why, I mean, maybe that's why all this stuff has been happening because, because of that. I mean, maybe he feels bad about that. He definitely Absolutely. felt bad for not being there. I wish my dad could have been there for my life. I'm all my life. I've thought I've been, well, I'm a half and half. I'm more my, I'm my mom and my dad, obviously. Right. But I get more of my, my whole life. I've been raised thinking I'm closer to the way my mom is. But in reality, I think I'm like 60, 40, my dad, because I yeah. get all of my creative talents from my dad, my musical talents. And that's what I do. That's, that's what I do. I get and that's okay. That's okay that you're like that. Cause you know, you have, you have both in you. So, and it's okay. Cause I don't feel like he was all bad, you know, something, mm -hmm. whatever happened, he just got into that situation and he didn't start out bad, you know? Yeah, no, he had a good heart. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and and I do I do feel that I, I believe it or not I actually like your dad. You're his his uh, energy and his personality, and you may have picked up some of that, and that's okay. okay. But whatever happened with him, that was his ordeal, and and you know he don't he don't want you to feel like okay. So and we both we both have mom and dad in us. That's how it goes, you know. Right. So he doesn't want you to feel, you know, oh, you know, you're not going to obviously take after him with certain stuff, but his artistic, you know, genes that he had, and you have that. And then, and, and he's very proud of you and he's, and he wants you to, and, and, and I think, you know, that he's very proud of the man you have become you know? and, and, and he just wants you to be happy, just be happy. And you're not going to make the same, all right. He uses the word dumb choices that or stupid choices that he makes. You know what I mean? He, he knows that you're not going to do that. So, you know what I mean? He, and he, so he's like very proud of you and he knows that he's knows that he knows that you're not going to do that, what he did. So he wants you to, you know, very proud and continue what you're doing and big things are happening for you. And he wants you to know that. And he's, he's going to be there for every milestone that you go through, you know, and he is a better dad to you. And I, and I don't want to say because he has crossed over, but he really is because whatever he had to deal with the demons on earth, that's what he dealt with. So now he's like, I'm going to be, he can be a better dad toward, towards you now that he's in heaven. You know, does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Yo, just like, a, yeah, thank you for that. But yeah, just like I'm saying all this stuff that I didn't know about my dad, maybe the reason is because I, you know, my dad was on the run from the law. He got knows who else he was on the run <laughs> yeah. from. Yeah. Right? So maybe that's yeah. why he kept away and he couldn't tell me because then they'd come and kill me. So he, I don't know, I'm just guessing. But yeah, that's, that's why. And wow, yeah, thank you so much for this. Oh, you're welcome. You know what's interesting too is that it's, it's something I was thinking of while you two were talking is it almost seems like your father, while he was in physical form here on earth, is almost was in your life exactly the same way that all of these odd experiences are now in your life. Yes. And, you know, it was just what I mean by that is, you know, you're, you, you don't hear from him for a long time and all of a sudden oh, you pass a weird house and you for some reason it stands out to you and you start paying attention to it mm. and it's like oh, like there's mannequins in the front when you wait well now there's because he's always there and it's and then and you say and you, you say like wow that's something my dad would do and it turns out that was what you're it was him and then that's what he was <laughs> yeah. doing yeah so it's like these weird it's like the the synchronicities that are happening to you now it's like that's that was your that's how that was your rapport with your father while he was here, you know, and it's now just, it's just continuing on. Yeah. Yeah. Very oh, cool. Yeah, it's so crazy, man. It is. It is crazy, you know, and, and you are so amazing, Jamie, and he wants you to know that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. One of the things that I, I wish I could have told him and I might've, I might've, cause you know how your memory gets when you get old, right? So I, I might've told him when he, on his deathbed, but I don't, I can't remember because it was happening around that time. It, I don't remember, but my dad loved old cars and I love old cars. I mean, I see old cars from the 50s and the 40s and it takes yeah. your breath away. I don't know jack s about engines and stuff. You know, I know to take care of my mm -hmm. car. Mechanic, yeah. But my dad did. My dad built hot rods. My dad would took, took the engine out of a truck and put it into a 34 Plymouth. Like my dad was very uh, engine mechanical, you know, and I didn't learn any of that stuff. So I took auto shop in high school. I, 
the teacher, he was very quick when he pointed out what we were supposed to do with the car. And I was like, people asked me because I was paying attention. And I was like, yeah, he said to undo these four bolts. The car was up in the lift. We, the car almost fell down and crushed everyone. And he was fast. He was always like, hey, do this one, this one, this one. And he take carburetor down. And I'm like, I don't, what is the carburetor? You know? But yeah. with, my, with my last band, uh, it's so weird how things happen. In, in life, how in, in order for things to happen now, certain things had to start years and years ago in order for the course of events to work out, in order for it to work out in the future. And it's, it's, it's so crazy when you look back. Yeah. yeah. So, buddy of mine that I went, oh my God, yeah, right? So, okay, buddy of mine that I, I said I went to college with, but he didn't actually, he wasn't enrolled in my school, but he lived in a house with people that I was friends with that I went to school with. He was a DJ and an artist and a painter, and he still is now. And, uh, Charles, he's, he's awesome. He had a house party at his house and told me to bring my guitar because there was going to be a band there that night. And I'd never been in a band before because I wasn't allowed to do that because my dad had, was in bands and my dad did bad things. So I, music was not really encouraged until my mom saw, oh, maybe this kid actually can play. And then she encouraged me, but I get it. I understand her apprehension. She just looked at it from a single-minded point of view of the band is bad. You know, and I'm like, nah, yeah, yeah. it isn't. So anyway, that guy was friends with a guy who worked for the Philly Auto Show. He came to my record release party and told me that he wanted to use one of my songs for the auto show. And he did. And he used one of the songs that I wrote for three years in a row for the background music for the commercials for the Philly Auto Show. My dad would have been so proud to know that. It's like, oh my God. We went to the auto show with, I went there with my dad and now the music and the commercial is my song. Like how, how cool is that? But I don't remember telling him if I did, I don't think he, I don't know. Do you know Beth? He, <laughs> does he know that? Well, I guess he knows now. Oh, sure he does. Yeah, absolutely. He does now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I'm nuts. But then that band ended on a very terrible note, pun intended. But if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be in the situation that I am now, which is way better. And it needs to be the way that it is now. Those things needed to happen. Terrible things, but they needed to happen in order for me to get where I am now. And sometimes I feel like when you picture a yin yang, I picture like when things happen in your life, if something's really bad's going to happen, then the yin and yang of life, something equally good is going to happen. So if something almost kills you, if you make it through that, it's going to be amazing. The reward for living through that is going to, not the reward, but, you know, the, I don't know what else to call it. I'm not that you're rewarded, but the opposite. You know, it, that's how life works. Something crazy happens, something bad happens. Something. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, they can bring up the, the yin-yang symbol. It's, 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 it's sort of like, a, you know, it's the light and dark, positive and negative, male, female. But there's, but there's, but if you notice in in the symbol, there is a small part of its opposite in itself. You know what I mean? Like there is a little bit of darkness in the light, and there's a little bit of light in the darkness mm -hmm. always, and it's never absolutely one or the other. And I, I think that you know these these the synchronicities and the stuff that happens is is it. I think it probably means something different to each person, but I think it's you know for those of us that pay attention because mm -hmm. this, this same kind of thing happens to happens to us as well mm -hmm. um but it's just I, to me it's it's like i said before just like a tip of hat tip of the hat in the universe like you know like yeah life isn't just like this job you're doing or this commute you have to make or this you know this, uh, this mundane mm -hmm. thing you have to do to make money or this that or, you know it's so much more than that and it, it, it's almost yeah. like a little Stop and smell the roses. A little clue. Like, right. yeah, you're okay. It's not about how much money you make. It's not about the biggest house. It's not about how much land you have. It's not about, you know, it's just about breathing and being and doing what makes you happy and just being present at the moment. Yeah. Is yeah. what they're trying to teach us. And really paying attention to the yeah. details. Yeah, right. You have this one life. Well, I mean, I believe in past life regression. That's another... <laughs> That's not a podcast, but I'm just saying that, yeah. you know, it's still the energy. The energy is there, you know, and uh, it doesn't die. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it's just fascinating, you know. And we keep learning and growing. Nothing. We're not. No, we don't master this, and it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to hear about your stories. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have lots of stories. Yeah, that'll be that'll be an episode soon. I will. will yeah. Interview, interview Beth, <laughs> so she can go into detail about all her. Crazy, yeah. crazy stories and stuff yeah i'm doing a lot i'm doing a lot of forensic mediumship classes so Whoa. yeah a lot uh, yeah that's another class yeah, which, that's yeah. Gonna be, yeah in fact we're going to touch on that on, the, on on the next episode uh in the bunker like we just when you take a just a random day trip with a with a medium you you never know really what's going to pop up and what's going <laughs> to happen and um yeah so and it's and it's in the same realm of the things that you experienced jamie like you you know, yes, like Jamie. Sudden, Jamie, you have gifts. You know, you don't know, but you do. I'm telling you. Yeah, like the, just the, the the ability to focus on the those small details where a lot of people maybe just walk right past those little signs and those little clues. They walk right past it; they don't even notice because they're not mm -hmm. paying attention. But you are so hyper focused on like everything, mm -hmm. seemingly like mm -hmm. they, none of the stuff gets by you. And I think it's that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely true. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I, yeah. Yo, I can look at, I can look at stuff. <laughs> yeah. That I'm designing, and I can tell if, if things are equally spaced or not. Wait, but, but it's like minutia. I, I still to this day, like I'll, I'll test myself, and I'll be like, no way, and I'll, I'll double check, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, how the heck did I? <laughs> And I guess that I don't know. It's, it's, def it's definitely something that I have in my um, yes, like in my DNA. Yes, absolutely. It's so fascinating. It really is. It's so interesting and so fascinating. You, you know, and we're always learning and growing. And we may not have. We, I, I really truly believe that we will never have all the answers. We won't. Yeah, it's all. It's, it's all yeah. The search. Yeah. And that's the fun of this. The journey. It's all about the journey. Yes, the journey. Right? It really is. Absolutely. It's good band also. <laughs> Great band. <laughs> I was just talking about them last night. That's funny. Oh, Don't that's stop funny. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie, I want to thank you for coming on. It was it's yeah. really thank awesome. Thank you. Was, and it, when I heard your presentation, I was like, man, I, we got we to gotta bring him into the podcast. Yeah. So, I'm so, so excited I got to hear some of it because I missed it, you know? So I'm right. like, I'm so excited. Yeah. This, this is great. I, thank you. I can't wait to hear your stories. I'm really looking forward to hearing. Yeah, please talk about them next time. Please. <laughs> Will do. Absolutely. Yeah, the next episode, we're going to go into a little adventure that we have. It's just indicative of, you know, what happens to, to us on a daily basis. Not not the same exact kind of phenomenon that you experience, Jamie, but, you know, in the same realm, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. so. Thank, thank you. Thank it's you great, so to hear, it's great to hear from you. Hope to see you soon. Yes. Even on a screen, I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. All right. It's been, a, it's been a great episode. I want to thank everybody for joining us, and we'll see you next time in the bunker. I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode in the bunker. If you enjoy this podcast, there are a few things that you can do to help support the show. If you're on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, you can leave us a five-star rating and review, and this will help others to find the bunker and the safety that it provides. And the podcast is free to listen, but it isn't free to create. So I urge you that if you enjoy the podcast, go to our homepage and click that support tab and just help support the show. This will allow us to provide much more content moving forward. You can also just share our page on social media. The Bunker is located on Twitter at InTheBunkerCast. Again, that is InTheBunkerCast on Twitter. Also, you can send us a direct email at mail to the bunker at gmail.com. That's mail to the bunker 
at gmail.com. If you're experiencing some strange activity or just want to tell your story, feel free to shoot us a message either on Twitter or on Gmail. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next time in the bunker. <laughs>